Let's turn to that leaked document in the United States. It suggests that the Supreme Court is about to overturn a ruling that made abortion legal across the country in 1973. Senior Democrats in the United States say the country's Supreme Court looked poised to inflict the greatest restriction of rights in the past 50 years. While well, rival protesters have been demonstrating outside the U.S. Supreme Court. It's the beginning to the end on the court documents leaked, but we have to keep fighting because we know the Supreme Court is swayed by public opinion, and so we have to come out mass mobilization of people power to say that the reversal of Roe v. Wade is good and it will save lives, and that is good, and they should keep going forward with the majority opinion. They are not going to get away with this. Let me say that I don't care what I have to do, but they're, they're not going to do this to D.C., and they are not going to do this to America. There is more of us than there is of them, and we are going to fight. So strong reaction. We've got rival groups there uh, explaining how they're feeling about this. This is the leaked document from uh, this proposed this proposal from the U.S. Supreme Court. We've got a lot to discuss. We're going to cross over to speak to Kim Whaley, who is professor of law at the University of Baltimore. Professor, let's start with the leak itself, because this is it's, it's really hard to fathom how this could happen. This is the Supreme Court, apart from damaging the U.S. US's highest institution. What, what do we know about this leak? How did it happen? We don't know how it happened. Uh, we do know that Politico, the outlet that that sort of broke the story, uh, has meticulously authenticated it according to them. And we know the reporters are very well regarded. So um, we also know looking at the opinion, the timing of the opinion, the process for circulating it for edits, all of that is consistent with Supreme Court practice. So it is, it's unusual, maybe even shocking, but not unprecedented actually. Roe itself during the, the deliberations around Roe, there were leaks from the court. It's unusual. It's certainly a problem for the court itself. But I really think in this moment, the real story is what the court's doing on substance, not so much what happened on procedure that affects arguably the reputation of the court. But the decision itself is going to affect millions of untold uh, women and girls of childbearing age, particularly low income people in the United States in ways that, frankly, uh, the five justices on this court have no personal understanding that they could even fathom to make this kind of decision for the rest of us. So I do want to go through that as well in, in detail, because like you say, these are people, the, the, predominantly the people that do end up having abortions. It's a particular demographic within the U.S., but it could potentially not go this way. There is still a chance that the justices will change their decisions, change their thinking, those five Republican justices. Are you thinking that that may be the case? No, I don't think there's you know, any chance that one of them would change the, their vote. Uh, we haven't heard, of course, from the Chief Justice, uh, John Roberts. It's being reported that he is not going to side with the majority. Um, but, you know, this is a pretty radical statement. I'm not surprised, given that the court was not willing to protect Roe in, in Texas with the SB8 bounty hunter law. The fact that they didn't step in on a preliminary injunction and adhere to existing law, to me, that was the first swipe at Roe. This is not a surprise at all. So this is long in coming. No, I don't think the outcome will change. Maybe some of the tweaking of the language will change between now and June. But I think we can rest assured as Americans, this is fully consistent uh, with where this court was going and certainly where with, with where Donald Trump who appointed three just of the nine justices uh, on the court with the promise of overturning Roe? Um, he his actions are very consistent with with the, what this decision appears to be as well. So in that case, if that is the case, if Roe versus Wade is overturned, realistically, what does that mean? All states, twenty two states, me, making abortion effectively illegal. It means that every state can put, erect whatever restrictions the state wants on abortion um, from the time of pregnancy, um, including uh, banning abortions for the life of the mother or in the case of incest. Uh, it means that your ability to access abortion will depend on two things, where you're located in the United States, 
Um, and number two, if you're located in a state that has strict abor abortion bans, if you have enough financial means to travel somewhere else in the country that does give you access to the abortion right. That's why this is going to be tremendously difficult for low-income women and it will probably lead um, to, to self-help abortions and, and maternal death. Um, we will probably see more women and people of childbearing age die in the United States as a result of these five individuals who are not elected but sit for life as a result of their decision that the Constitution no longer protects something that has been enshrined in uh, in American common law for 50 years. I wonder the mood of Americans themselves, when you look at opinion polls, there is a mood that feels that actually women should be, should have the right over their own health matters. They should have the decision-making process with their doctors, with their medical experts over their own rights. So I wonder why these justices are so not in line with what the mood of America is. Well, you're right. I mean, it's my recollection is only 8% of Americans actually want to see Roe reversed. Um, but, you know, America is now, you know, in a multi-decade siege from the far right. And it's now in the form of the Republican Party. Across all levels of government, we are headed towards minority single party rule. And one of the sort of crown jewels of that movement has been to, to destroy uh, the, the right to abortion. And I say really what this is about is not so much a right to anything. It's about constraining overreaching government when it comes to childbirth and reproductive health decisions. Americans really do, we saw this with the pandemic, have a, a, a liberty streak, so to speak. They care about independence vis-a-vis -vis an overbearing government. This issue just hasn't been framed properly, frankly, um, because it's it's about as obnoxious a an interference with someone's autonomy that that can be imagined and many Americans at least anecdotally are saying if this were about men there's no way this court would have uh, infringed on autonomy and bodily integrity in this way um, so there's a hint of misogyny that comes across these pages that is not a surprise uh, to many of us who care about these issues in America. And then when we talk about what the Justice Alito wrote in this draft, the the decision, the decision of Roe versus Wade being egregiously wrong, legally, what does he mean by that? It's a made up term. It means we don't like it. We think it was poorly reasoned. Uh, and essentially, he would have constitutional law go into a time capsule um, back to 1791 and say, OK, was there a robust uh, access to abortion in 1791 when the 14th Amendment was ratified. And he concludes there was not, therefore there isn't any today. But of course, in 1791, women could not vote. Women could not, uh, had no access to property. They couldn't enter into contracts. Uh, they, they, they had no rights to their children. Uh, that's not, I think, a snapshot of how American rights with respect to women should be measured today. And certainly the time capsule approach to things is nowhere in the Constitution itself. So unfortunately, this this is a decision by by essentially, you know, five people on the court, three again put on by a president who did not win the popular vote, who was impeached twice, um, five people deciding and he uses the word morality uh, that mor morally wise, this is the way the court should should rule. And we have the power, so we're going to do it. It's a very, very sad day in America, not only for women and other people of childbearing age, but for the United Constitution itself. Professor Whaley from the University of Baltimore, as always, thank you very much for just talking us through, walking us through that. Professor Whaley, they're speaking to us live.